Hey guys, a warm welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I'm gonna be working again on the Ferrari 308. As a recap, we have taken this from a non-running, complete gamble of a car to a road legal, fully operational, fully serviced, very enjoyable car. And as part of phase two, we are gonna make it look nice again. We're gonna be doing that Euro conversion and a full respray. Anyway, before I do that, I need to take a few pictures of the car. We're gonna capture the uh, before images on this one for Forza magazine. Now I write for these guys now, check these out. Uh, we have also featured two of my cars already in here. We've got the uh, Rattarossa, the build on the Rattarossa, and also the Challenge Stradale. That's been in uh, this edition. And then my first write-up was in the April 2020 magazine. So while I get set up, guys, grab yourself a cup of tea. We've gone with the British theme today. For my American audience, cup of tea, otherwise referred to sometimes as a brew, or rhyming slang is Rosie Lee. Now, a top tip for you. If you are too lazy to go and make yourself a cup of tea, don't worry, sit back, continue watching the video, shout out to your other half. I need a little help with a crossword. What is the name of the thing a golf ball is placed on when you're about to shoot off on the first hole? When they shout back, T, you just say, lovely, milk and one sugar, please. And there you go. Enjoy the video. Our plan today on the conversion is we are gonna be focusing on the front of the car here. Uh, we are gonna be looking at removing the front big rubber bumper. Also this lower balance, the front grille as well. I'm still waiting for my fog lights to go in on the side there. They're in uh, transit somewhere around the world. Um, so in order to do that, we're gonna have to remove a lot of bits to be able to get to the fastening screws and bolts all around this. And the other thing we're gonna be doing today as well, as part of the kind of rear end conversion, as I mentioned in the previous video, we're gonna to have to make some modifications to the engine, which involve removing these manifolds. Uh, we also need to remove the front manifold, which I'm not exactly sure whether or not this engine needs to come out. So we're gonna have a close look at that. But what we're gonna be doing in the meantime is starting to prepare those parts ready to go on. So some of those bits are new, some of those bits are old, all of the bits that are old, they're going onto this project we're gonna to start to refurbish. Now, one of the things I know you guys have all mentioned is clean the car. Look how bad that is. And uh, yes, I will be cleaning it. However, we are gonna be doing something on the 355. That does look very clean in the garage there, but I assure you it's quite a dirty car at the moment. It's been sat in there for the last few months. So uh, we are gonna be giving it a top to toe detail as part of that, we'll also uh, be trying out some ceramic coating. Now, as I said in the last video, never used any ceramic coating products, so we're gonna be uh, testing it on that car. Now, I'm not sure how well it's gonna show up on the gray, so one of the things, one of my ideas is we're gonna mask off half of the bonnet here on the 308 and uh, just detail half of it and just see how good that product is. At the same time, we're applying it to this one. So we're gonna start at the front on the 308. Now it's a little bit like a jigsaw puzzle doing this. You need to remove one piece in order to access uh, bolts and fasteners for the other bit. So we're gonna start off with the grill at the front. Uh, then we're gonna do the front bumper. We're gonna look at the brackets on this front bumper because that all needs to be modified and I'll show you when we get them off. Then we'll be doing this lower balance. So I don't know if you saw that, but we've got our old horn mechanism here that's uh, come off. That's all broken and that was rattling around in the front before. And I don't know if you spotted this guys on the previous video, but one of my fans was not going around and I couldn't quite figure out why. It was basically because this was in the way jamming the blades. Okay, so that's our front grill of the car. Let's take that and compare it with the new one that's going on the car for the Eurospec QV. And there you go, completely different, a much deeper grill on the front there. Really gives it a presence on the front. We've got up to two more slats in most areas. It's narrower, obviously, because we've got fog lights going on either side. So should give the car a bit more presence at the front. 
Let's give it one last tour to appreciate just how lovely that bumper is. There we go. All right, there we go. Our front bumper is held on underneath here with some 17 mil nuts. Now, that stays there. Now, the difference between the US spec and the Euro spec is this here. This is like a, a crash impact little shock. Uh, I'm not sure, I, I think it's like five or 10 mile an hour impact it's designed for. That's the whole idea of these rubber bumpers for the US models. Um, so we need to make a modification with this. And I can't quite remember, I did it before on the other car, so we're gonna have to take it all apart and just uh, have a look and figure out how we're gonna do that one. Okay, and here she comes. Now, from memory, these things are freaking heavy. What's that over there? Something's holding this one. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Oh, something there, something there. Why is that one coming off? There we go. All right. Okay, here's our two bumpers. So our US spec one, ready to go on the scales. The only difference is two things. I've got the lenses on this. I've still got all the uh, housing units on the Euro. However, we'll make it completely fair. I'll put the new lenses on the scales with the Euro one as well. The other difference is on the Euro, simply because I can't be bothered to take them off at the moment, we already have these mounting brackets. So that's gonna add weight to the Euro bumpers. So let's check out how much the big boy weighs. Let's switch it on. Right, so it's zeroed out. We're going to do this in kilograms. Crikey, that's heavy. There we go. Let's have a look. So that is 19 kilograms. Right, let's try the Euro one. Okay, let's get the uh, scales ready for the Euro. Right, zero. So let's put that there. <coughs> And those, right, that is 3.4 versus 19 kilos. So almost, well, 15 and a half kilograms difference. That's just the front. So when Ferrari created the Challenge Rally from the normal 360, they shaved 100 kilos off of the normal car. And you wondered how they do it. You thought it was quite an amazing feat that they did before. I think I could quite easily shave at least 100 kilos off this. So we've got 15 off the front bumper. We've got at least that plus more on the back bumper. While we're here, I'm gonna just show you how much deeper that bumper is compared to the Euro. So I'll place the Euro on top of the US and let's have a look. So I'll line up the back. And I'll just have to hold that. So that goes there, that goes there. And there you go, you've got all of that lovely extra rubber bumper on your US cars, quite substantial. Now, despite not liking the look of the US spec bumpers and preferring the clean lines of the Euro, again, it's just personal preference. Some people like the uh, big rubber ones. Um, I do like the concept and the idea behind them. So in a low impact, the rubber and these shocks will absorb or are supposed to absorb uh, that crash up to a few mile an hour. Now, I know that fiberglass bumper is not gonna have any effect at all, or very, very little. However, what I'm thinking is I might combine the Euro bumper with these shocks here, and uh, hopefully that might give me a couple of uh, miles per hour um, kind of protection really and protect all of this paintwork those things are literally a couple of hundred pounds uh new if you want to get one of those the uh, aftermarket version they look exactly the same so i'm quite prepared to uh sacrifice one of those in a crash rather than all of this panel at the front here so what i'm going to try and do is marry up the euro with these uh, brackets, these US spec brackets. Now I know they weigh a lot more. I'm not worried about weight on this car. It was just to prove a point, but uh, let's see if we can do it. That is just sitting in there on the bracket. And as you can see, the profile is really tiny. We've gone from one extreme about this wide to the other.
So, I still like the fact that that uh, has a little bit of shock protection. So I uh, need to think outside the box here. We need to pull it out. So maybe make a uh, bracket to go between the bracket. While I figure out a solution on that front bumper, I'm gonna spend some time cleaning up these manifolds just to make them look a lot nicer when they're ready to go on the car. So it's not gonna be anything concourse. We are just literally gonna clean up all the ends, remove all the old, uh, like the donut rings here, the ceiling rings that are still on this one, clean up the faces, and then we're just gonna give it a couple of coats of the VHT silver. happy how these have transformed and turned out didn't take long just a bit of a rub down a bit of a clean up and then just a couple of coats of paint so we're working on getting this lower balance off the car just taking my time all of the little fasteners that fasten the top here onto the balance, they are all off. They're the ones that cut your wrists up because you've got to get in there. Um, so we've got them all off on that side. I think I've got two more to get off on that side, but in order to get to a couple of them, you need to take off the wheel arch panel here and then you have to go right up here to get to it. The other annoying thing is the one right in the corner there, it's really hard to find because Ferrari put a load of like bonding uh, sealant over it so you don't know it until the very last thing and then finally after that one what you need to do is so Ferrari also bond it along this line here so the best way I find to do this is you take a paint stripper you just very carefully put it in here and then I just work my way along and you can see Actually, where well, I've got some off there, that's the old seal there, the old sealer. They just used to seal the two panels together. But as you can see, that has now got some movement. So I've got a few bolts underneath to uh, get off. Again, a nightmare because they are rusted. So we are having to uh, cut those off at the moment and then this will be ready to go. So we're nearly ready to remove this lower panel. I've got a couple of stubborn little fasteners right underneath where unfortunately over time, obviously this car's a 1983, so 37 years worth of uh, rust and exposure to the elements. They are just sea solid. So I'm gonna have to cut a couple of those out and uh, then this is ready to come off. Uh, I just need to get this one off. So we have got all the fasteners off this now and it is ready to start coming off real carefully. Oh, there we go. There's one. Then on this side. Why not? This one's metal. Obviously the uh, deep dish we got going on the car is Fiberglass With our lower balance off the car, it's going to be much easier for me because I've got all of this access underneath the car. I can look up underneath and I can create some kind of spacer to go between this shock here and the new uh, fiberglass bumper. So uh, I think we'll crack on with that as the next job. So we're just offering up the new spoiler to the car. I just remembered something the gap here for the fiberglass and that really thin metal sheet sits in 
and sandwiches up there is much smaller on this so we need to make another little modification to get that to fit there's a temporary solution until i can get to college and fabricate some brackets to fit perfectly i'm using and modifying these old ones so i'm going to cut them down i'm going to put a bit of bar in here and then we're going to secure it just to get the right length and then i'll know exactly how big the brackets are that i'm going to make in future As with most projects like this, nothing is simple, nothing is straightforward. So I started on the front end of this uh, Euro conversion because it was meant to be the, uh, the easier route. I know the back end is going to be hard work. So uh, I forgot though how difficult and how much you have to modify with this. So the three key elements on the front here are our front bumper. And for that, obviously, we are now having to remake uh, some brackets to get this one to fit and uh, totally modify this. So I've got more or less the depth that I'm happy with, but I don't know if you can see that on the camera, but it's really low here. So again, we need to make another modification to get that to sit higher and flush with this panel here. Second bit is the uh, lower valance. And as I've pointed out, that because it's fiberglass, it's a lot thicker, will not fit in the slots on the side. So we need to look at that, modify that, along with all the mounting points. And the third part is the grill. And the grill, all the mounting points compared to the original US one, again, are completely different. So, three jobs there. All the parts I've got. The other one, obviously, that I uh, still am waiting for uh, from the uh, shipping company is the fog lights. Again, we've got no wiring loom for that at all on this car, so we need to make all that. I need to figure out how we're going to mount that to the car as well. So four jobs, actually, that are very, very tricky just to do the front end of this car. realized halfway through sanding this I haven't explained what I'm doing so when I bought this uh, front lower balance really cheap one of the reasons was uh, it must have had some damage so it's been filled you can see all of this old like filler that just piled up uh, it's just that's, that's how it's been left so uh, we're gonna sand all that back as best possible just so our, uh, we can test fit it and then when we, this goes to the body shop we're gonna finish all that off properly Okay, so that's all finished. Let's get that on the car. And there you go, that is in place already. Only took a couple of minutes, so I need to adjust the front bumper. And then uh, I need to mark up the front grill as well. Okay guys, I'm gonna wrap the video up. I'm running out of time rapidly. And this next little bit is actually quite boring. Uh, it just involves me taking on and off all these bits fine-tuning them until I'm happy with the fitment. We also need to do a little bit of drilling, create some brackets for this uh, lovely front grille. So join me in the next one. Hopefully by then I'll have this front end done. We'll also, with a bit of luck, have the fog lights so I can have those in the front and we can take some nice video, some footage of the uh, full conversion on the front there. Then I'll be moving on to the back. You saw the manifolds. They are looking fantastic now. Really, really happy with uh, how they've come out. So, check, watch the video, and then when you're bored still, check out Forza Magazine. As I said earlier, I'm starting to write a regular column for these guys. I am gonna put a link in the description below where you can read the free article from Forza all about Rattarossa and the Stradale. And then, make sure you subscribe to the mag. Thank you very much for watching, guys. Hope you enjoyed it. If you did, give it a big thumbs up. Write your comments below. Uh, I'd love to read all of those about each of the videos. And check out the Instagram channel where I post daily. I've been posting today uh, some little updates on this, pictures about the build and videos about the build, which I do on all of the cars. So uh, check out that. That's the channel down there. Thank you very much for watching, guys. I will see you shortly in the next one. Ciao.